Bonjour, my name is Scott, and I'm going to give you a house tour of our Maison de Maitre, which is an eight-bedroom kind of mansion slash manor house that's in a, the outside of a, uh, a village in the south of France. We've been here for three years. We have four cats. If you want to find anything more about me, I've got a video that I can post at the back that give you more information about me, what I did before, and uh, why we chose here. So let's get inside and take a look at the house. So this is the entranceway to the house. We have sort of a vestibule here um, with some kind of interesting stained glass windows. We think they're from the 60s. Not really keeping with the house. So we're not sure if we're going to keep them or not. Which we think is around 1849, 1850. Um, we may use the individual panes of glass, frame them or do some sort of art or something with them later. Uh, but our plan is to replace the glass with their clear or some sort of patterned or frosted and then put some metal ironwork on the front which is kind of in keeping with what they would have had at this time. Uh, we don't think the doors are original but we're going to keep them because they're big and and they're actually in fairly good shape on the inside. The outside needs a lot of repairs but we're planning on painting them anyways. So one of the things we really liked about this house were these doors here. Um, we think they're original um, they're in really quite good shape. They just need a good painting and cleaning up a bit. So yeah, this is our hallway. It's pretty big. Um, we're planning to do a lot of woodwork on the sides, have two chandeliers, uh, do a lot of plaster work on the ceiling with like ceiling roses and patterns around the, 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 the edges of the, um, the ceiling, kind of having a bit of fun with it. Um, we're going to be removing two lights on the side here and putting them on the top floor. There's a good spot for it up there where we're going to make a library and I'll show you where that is later. One of the things I really liked about this house was the floor. Um, we think they're original tiles. Uh, they've got to be really uh, worked on. We've got to remove, you know, 100 years of wax and grime and stuff like that. But at this point, we're just ignoring it. So when we get the walls done and we get all the woodwork we want to get up and we get the ceiling roses in, we get chandeliers hung in the hallway here, we're going to um, work on the floors and, and try to get them back to like a really nice quality. The hallway width is about something like three meters I think. And we just got a couch here that was in a bedroom at our old house. We have a pellet stove that we don't use anymore because when we plugged it in below the fuses and kind of sparked. Um, we're just going to replace that eventually. Um, we have a stairwell here that goes up to the other floors in the house. There's a total of three floors including this one and we also have a pigeonary which is uh, where they used to keep breed pigeons or for either for messages or for eating, we're never too sure. But I have a video, which I'll add to this video at the end in the description that kind of goes into what I found up there. All right, the next room we're gonna take a look at is a living room. So welcome to our living room. This is one of the reasons why we bought this place. Um, we absolutely love the fireplace. So with the detailed carvings, there's a little rose in here, little uh, doodads and things. It uh, needs a good restoration. I'm gonna clean up all this um, brass that's on the fireplace yeah, give it all a really super good clean like as in polish it and get it shiny again and try to dig out all this yellow that's probably just like stains from smoking over the generations or whatnot this floor also we're not sure is original there's a kind of a marble down here like a white marble it looks very 60s to us uh, we think this um fireplace place hearth is probably original at the bottom uh, some of the local colors of stone are what this is uh, which is this red marble. But yeah, we're not too sure what we want to do with this floor in here, whether we're going to keep it or not, because we think it's been replaced at some point. Um, the hallway is original. The dining room, which I'll show you next, is original. And it's pretty, pretty cool. It needs a lot of work to restore it, but uh, it'll be great. So all the furniture in here, just temporary. It was just what we had in our old house. Uh, we're going to go much more elegant, grand. So we're going to do a lot of antiques. We'll have a great big mirror, uh, plaster panels all along here, very uh, large ceiling rows and a large chandelier in the center and all sorts of plaster work on the edges, probably with little bits of gold. And we're going to try to make it a really amazing, not like Versailles, not nothing too crazy, but just really cool room that, you know, we can have fun with and make it super fancy. This room is just not anything like what we're going to do with it. One of the reasons why we haven't been showing anything because it's just been, this is how we've been living for three years is just old furniture, uh, TV that doesn't fit. I just really didn't have a wall in here because it's not going to stay in here. We're going to have a den or a uh, sunroom that's going to have the TV in it. I'm not planning to do it like this. So, um, but yeah, it's got two big, two big windows 
Uh, the curtains are obviously not going to be what we're going to keep. On this side, we have the, the living room, which is, this is the front of the house. The living room is on this side, and then on this side is the dining room. We're actually using it right now for kind of a kitchen because the actual kitchen is in pretty bad shape, as you'll see shortly. And we have some old furniture that we're going to be getting rid of. We have a really nice fireplace here with little feet on it. Little, I guess, furry legs or something. I don't know, a griffin or something. I'm not sure what we would call it. But this will be uh, part of the dining room. Uh, we really love the floors in here. Um, so what it looks like is the original owners for this place were in charge of a vineyard. So we have little uh, grapevines that are running along in tiles around, which we think are original. And there's sort of a crest in the center. Uh, this floor needs a lot of work, but we should be able to restore it so it looks fantastic. Um, currently, uh, it's just a whole lot of mess of stuff. We've got cat food, because we've, we've got four cats, we've got nowhere else really to put everything. We've got no stove in this house. We have microwaves. We have like a little teeny toaster oven. We have a hob or like a hot plate thing. We have no, we have no uh, countertops. We have a sink in the other room, um, in the actual kitchen that we use with the runner back and forth. Um, there's a doorway here beside the stove here, or beside the fridge here, that leads into the kitchen. So eventually you'll be able to come through here with uh, stuff from when you're cooking it into, into your dining room. But for now, we're just all in here. We're living out of this room, which is, it's been challenging when, you know, we normally like to cook things and it's quite difficult when you're using microwaves and stuff. I think in the next year or so we'll be doing the kitchen, hopefully. We have a pantry back here, which I guess will be for linen eventually or something, or dishes when we ever get a dining room. It's about, I don't know, three feet deep. Uh, we plan to do on here is to have a huge mirror here, um, probably a red room. We're not sure what we're going to do with it. Lots of um, uh, plaster work on the lower level, probably like, or, or wooden uh, paneling in here. We're going to do really fancy uh, ceiling rows with patterns of plaster in the ceiling like I don't know what you're going to do yet but that's something I'm going to try to figure out what to do with one of my projects is what are we going to do in here are we going to do some sort of vine pattern grapes maybe because keeping with the room uh, we do some gold leaf in here this room is also about five meters by I think the actual width width of this room is larger than it is this way if I recall um, yeah so we're looking forward to getting it cleaned up and uh actually having people over to be use it because right now we don't do that. So next let's go check out the kitchen and it's pretty grim but uh, yeah let's go. So this is the back of the house. Uh, this way is towards the kitchen and this way is towards the den and the sunroom. I think that's what we're going to call it. And then my wife Sam has a workshop which is also at the end there. Uh, there is one room that's original to the house and there's an extension that we think went on in the 60s. We're not sure. Let's go take a look at the uh, kitchen. So welcome to our, what I would call a bit of a disaster of a kitchen. Um, when we first moved in here, um, we noticed that the ceiling, which is also the floor of our master bedroom, was down by about this much. So you, you basically felt like you're walking downhill as you walked across the bedroom floor. So it's not that it's going to structurally collapse or anything like that, but what we wanted to do is get it up as much as we could. So I've started, and I had to kind of halt, because there were other priorities at this point. Um, but I basically started scissoring on with uh, construction adhesive and bolts and getting the floor joists to be a little more rigid and, and jacked up. So I've done about a third of it, but what I'm going to be also doing is doing noggins, which are kind of like the uh, supports this way as, out as well. Uh, when we first moved in, I also was exploring the fireplace because I was wondering, because this is kind of an old house, and if you look at this, and you look at this metalwork and this kind of stucco stuff, it looks very 60s to me. And this, these wings, whoever they are, to keep the, the, the draft going up, and this curve, that doesn't look very original to us. So what I was thinking is maybe there would be a, an original old kind of stone fireplace behind. But everywhere I've kind of picked at and looked at, which, which is what all this is, to try to find for something on there, I don't think so. There's nothing that we found. So I think at some point they removed the old one and they rebuilt it. Um, this house was, we think, completely redone in the 60s. That's why we don't have a lot of ceiling roses. We don't have the original um, covings around the ceilings. It probably would have been a lot more grand back in the day, um, looking at some of the other houses in this area, in, this, in the next couple villages. Uh, we also think that this place hasn't been touched since the 60s. What I'm going to do is take this, 
kind of the idea with this would work and I'm going to frame this all. I'm going to probably remove the wings, uh, maybe keep the brick and this, uh, this, these metal, um, parts of the fireplace and then wood all the way around and then make it a little more elegant, I guess. Now this floor, um, which I've taken a little section up over here and I've basically had to cut uh, about a half a square meter out and dug down around a foot and a half. So about this much by this much and then down by the same amount um, in order to get the drainage, the sewer pipe from the back garden, which is what I've been doing a lot of work on over the last three years, is getting the slope of the garden, uh, getting all the irrigation in and that kind of thing and getting the plumbing from the outside inside better. Uh, it used to just run on the outside of the house, uh, but it now comes into here. So what I'm going to be doing is checking up all these tiles. Uh, the, the little section I took, them out, took out before came out really easily. So what I'm, because all there is is a tile, like a kind of a handmade tile. And then there's about that much of like a lime mortar underneath it. And that's just sitting on dirt, probably with sand originally, but there, there's no concrete uh, underneath it, nothing. So it's just like really uneven in here. So I'm going to dig down six inches, maybe a foot, something like that. Put a, a, a layer of insulation, plastic, and then pour a concrete base, probably 15 centimeters, something like that, which is like six inches, something like that. Um, and then put these same tiles back down. Also in this room, what we want to do is we're going to be putting um, a kind of a large, um, kind of a French style uh, stove in here. So this will be all this with like a, a heat vent, uh, extractor fan up here. This will kind of be the, the, the stove area. We'll have the fridge over here. We'll have cupboards, lower cupboards. We're going to do, most French people don't and Europeans don't have the upper cupboards but because we want the storage for pots and, and, and things like that. We're going to have to a certain height. We're going to have cupboards up to here as well, all the way around. And then on this wall over here, we're going to have a big pantry. And then right in the center here, we're going to have a island uh, with stools on this side. And then you basically be able to cook in this area here, kind of your L shape that you want. You got your stove, you got your fridge, and then you got your sink here. So this will kind of be the cooking end or the cooking area. And yeah, we have dishwasher and um, probably have one of those pot things, you know, to fill your pots with hot water for the stove over there. And yeah, it'll be, I think it'd be really good. Uh, it's a good size kitchen. I think it's like five meters by five meters, approximately. Most of these rooms are, it's quite big. And uh, we have an original light from the place. And uh, it's really amazing that we're going to restore. Uh, we're also going to do a bunch of um, LED lights in the ceilings and have two circuits. So we can either put the, the fancy kind of, um, what do you call it, chandelier. It's not really a chandelier, but it's it's a style of light that people had in the kitchens back then. Uh, it was originally would have been like either candles or gas or something like that. And it's been kind of retrofitted to have lights in it. So we're going to use that. Lots of polishing on it. It's bronze, I think. So we're going to try to shine it up and make it look good. Uh, but yeah, basically that's the plan for this room. So it's going to be a lot of work, which is kind of why we stopped it as well, because we need to fix the floor up. Uh, we had to get the plumbing and the stuff outside uh, done before we tackled as big a project as this. Another really cool thing we have is that in this corner over here, we, we were a bit on the fence of what we wanted to do, but we have a sink over there that's one piece that's a huge marble sink. It's got to be, you know, it's huge, that big. And we're going to keep that. And because we have a lot of cats, we're probably going to use that kind of the cat area. We're going to have like cupboards full of cat food and their water bowls and food bowls in there. Because the ceiling is quite low, you kind of bang your head on there. And I don't want to remove this whole thing and raise it. This whole, not quite a canopy, but I don't know you would call it, but this buttress or whatever that is. I don't want to raise stuff and make a lot more work for myself. That'll just kind of be a sink that we don't use very often. But yeah, the cat water can go in there. And we don't want to lose something as amazing as that huge big sink. We're done with the kitchen. Let's go and check out the den and the sunroom. Well, now that you've seen the mess, it's the kitchen. Um, let's go take a look at the den and uh, the sunroom and what we're going to do in this area. It's probably one of the biggest transformations. So we're hoping, really hoping we can save this floor. So there's a concrete layer that's been done because when we came in, there, it, was, it looked like there had been a carpet on here, probably a shag carpet from the 60s or something like that. And they basically just poured a leveling compound, which is some sort of cement because it's so rough in here. What we'd like to do is dig down about six inches or a foot, uh, put some insulation down, put down a proper uh, base of concrete, and then try to either sand these tiles down or use a concrete sort of acid to see if we can remove this stuff. If we can't, 
we'll give, you know, it's not the end of the world, but we're going to definitely give it a try to try to save what originally was in here. Um, the floor right now is so unlevel because we have a tree in the back that the roots had grown under. Same issue we had in the uh, kitchen where the roots went under the ground and they lifted everything. We'll be using it a lot for kind of this be our TV room possibly or just, you know, a couple lazy boy chairs or something like that or a couch that we can relax in. Got a nice one over there that we can uh, look out in the garden too. So this is kind of our chill room. Uh, we're also going to put a couple or a pair of um, French doors here so we can just kind of shut this off a little bit uh, from the extension that's uh, right over here. So this room is what we're calling the sunroom. Um, it's not a huge room, uh, but what we're going to do is take the window that's on the side over here, and we're going to open that up into a series of doors, kind of like French doors that are open up. We're not sure if we're going to have them kind of fold to one side or just have multiple doors to open. Uh, but on the other side of this is where we put the pool in. Um, so it's going to be a nice kind of view. Uh, we're going to have a couple couches running this way, maybe a big screen TV or a projector or something here so that we can kind of, you know, watch TV or watch a football game or whatever from the outside. Um, we're also planning on creating a, um, a bathroom here, not a bathroom, like a powder room. Um, so behind this here, we have a toilet and we're going to have a toilet and a sink. Uh, basically coming somewhere out to about this side and then on this side of it what we're planning to do is make a bar that runs along here and then have like a sink and then the you know wine fridge and a, you know, maybe beer taps or something like that so this would kind of be a bit of a party area if you want to call it that if we have people over guests over they can kind of be from in and out of here there's a little toilet for them they can go out to the pool they can come in we get drinks we can have a nice time in here and uh, yeah, the laundry machine's not gonna go there. It's gonna be upstairs eventually on the second, on the next floor up. Uh, we have a little room set for that, which I'll show you later. Also what we have back here is we have uh, a little room that used to be, we think a summer kitchen. Yeah, so in this room here, this is kind of gonna be my wife's um, hobby room or something. If she wants to do arts and crafts or jewelry, or whatever she's gonna do, we're gonna put a sink over here, which we replace the one that we already have. Uh, if she wants to do any blowtorch or welding or stuff like that, we've got a chimney here from what used to be the summer kitchen. Uh, we're gonna make massive alterations in this room other than making it kind of you know, a plaster on the walls and make it a little nicer. Uh, we may add a skylight in here, and the same in the other room, we we'll add two skylights in there, or what do you call them, Velux or roof lights or roof windows and just to kind of get some more light in here we're also not going to keep this this is very 60s we don't think it keeps with the house we're going to do something more along the lines of this we replace it with some wooden windows with that kind of style uh, and then my wife will be able to sit here and work and do jewelry stuff and look at the garden um, otherwise yeah other than fixing the floor maybe put some tiles in here making it white a uh, adding a bit more light in here with a skylight and uh, plasterboarding or drywalling the ceiling should be easy. But yeah, that's all we're planning to do with here. Uh, this is also a room that we you that the cats use a lot. They go in and out. We've got a cat door there that goes out into a catio, uh, which I'll explain more later. But uh, on why we have to do it, unfortunate. But uh, yeah, let's now go and take a look at the next floor. So this is the first landing we have. Um, there's a landing here and we have some storage in here. We basically you going to use that for, I don't know, putting coats and I don't know why they've got shelves here, but there's coats and things that go in there. It's this whole side, this whole end basically you can be using for suitcases or coats or whatever. So we're going to use that eventually. So yeah, they wallpapered everything and that's what they did in the 60s. I've not removed the wallpaper on this wall all the way up this stairwell because I needed scaffolding, but I've removed about... Uh, 17 100 bags so 17 100 liter bags of wallpaper from this house so far so yeah the plan also is to restore these floors um, there is some water freezing damage i don't know if it got too cold and the roof leaked or something like that but there's some spalling on some of the steps um, we're going to polish that up sand it if we need to do some sort of um, resurfacing of it and make it you know close as we can to fix it that's fine it's not a lot of damage but there's some uh, there's also an issue with this floor whereas all the landings have the support of the whole stairwell on it so this this side of the stairwell rests on this landing so it's over the years it's, it's kind of sunk down a bit not by much but just by about half an inch to an inch uh, so what i'm going to do is reinforce those jack them up slightly reinforce them 
make them flat, and then I'm going to repair all the stonework that's on this. Uh, that's happened on pretty much every floor, so that'll be a, a big project in the future to tackle. But for now, it's just a little low down the list. We get to see some of our cats. That's one of them. And another one over here. One of those English, one of them French. So this is our basically the next floor up from the ground floor. And we have another kind of vestibule, which we're going to use for an office down here. Um, basically, it's just full of junk right now. We've got a lot of linen and suitcases and all sorts of stuff. This leads to the front of the house, uh, right above the front door. Um, and what we're going to do is this is, will eventually be my wife's office. She'll have a computer in there and, you know, whatever, you know, shelves and things like that. Whatever you do for an office. It's not a huge size, but it's good enough for a, uh, a small office. I have a very similar one, which we'll look at next, next floor up, right above it. So we're going to do that for there. I'll show you this room first. So this is one of the bedrooms, this, the smallest, well, kind of the smallest bedroom on this floor. Uh, we're taking an even smaller bedroom that's at the other side of the hall, of the stairs, and we're going to turn that into a kind of a reasonably large bathroom for this whole floor. Um, yeah, so this has got two cupboards in it, not very deep. Um, there's enough in there to hold things, you know, hang some uh, dresses and things like that in here. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of kind of fancying up of this room. We're going to do uh, new ceiling rows. Um, plaster work, we're going to do kind of work off of these kind of things. If not these ones, we'll probably keep these and just fix them. We're not sure. And then we're also going to put a chandelier in the center of this room as well. It'll definitely hold a king size bed or a super king in here. It's a good size. It's probably just under five meters by four meters kind of thing. So we've got two good size windows out there. This is the south, almost perfectly south that way. So you get lots of sun in the winter and in the summer, which is great. Uh, we're not going to do much to the floors in here. These are what you would call tomets. You're basically just going to resurface them. We're going to get rid of all the old wax, maybe give them a little bit of a, a buffing uh, to get rid of the old dirt off and work on that and then just seal them again. With There's some special breathable seal you can use just for tomets that we're going to put down. Currently, this is holding a lot of junk. So there was a fireplace that was in the master bedroom that because the floor had sunk so much, it started cracking. So what I've done is I've removed it. So that's where we're keeping bits in here. There's bits over there and bits over here. And, and you know, we're keeping a tub in here for the new bathroom when we ever get to it and the sink and stuff like that, which I'll show you in, in a future video. It's just kind of a bit of a junk room right now, like a lot of these rooms are. Yeah, we, the fireplace here is good enough. Nothing too fancy. We're going to keep it probably just as it is, just clean it up a bit. Uh, we've also got pretty much all the house, all the window ledges are marble, which is kind of neat. Anyways, that's the plan for this room. Obviously, we're going to, you know, resurface all these walls, paint them, possibly do wallpaper on some of them. Uh, in this room, the wallpaper was on the ceiling, which was just crazy. Uh, a lot of these rooms had wallpaper on them. Um, so, yeah. That's the plan is to kind of bring this back, bring it back some luxury, bring it back some a bit of snazziness and gold and not too much gold, but just, you know, make it kind of cool. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, go see the room across the hall, which is another uh, guest bedroom. So this room is another bedroom, uh, guest bedroom that's actually quite large. Um, and this has all our clothes, our winter clothes, a whole lot of summer clothes we've not even unboxed yet, towels, um, bedding, just a ton of stuff in here that it's a house that has not been undone yet. It's pretty crazy that we have this many boxes left to undo from a three bedroom house. And we have such a big space that we will eventually need it. So anyways, if you look over here, we've got two big windows. Um, we've got a fireplace over here. Another cupboard on that end on that side, and then this wall here will have some uh, lights on it, sconces. Um, it's the same thing as the room beside us. It has really good exposure, be sunny all the time. Uh, we're going to do the same treatment. We're going to do woodwork, plaster work, kind of fancy plaster work. We're going to put a ceiling rose in, a chandelier, some plaster work to jazz up the kind of the ceiling around the edges. Maybe some gold, we're not too sure yet. Um, you know, it'll be fun. The same thing. We're going to keep the floor the same, just resurface it. I'm not going to do any kind of uh, fixing to it. 
Now towards the other end of the hallway, basically the stairs are here, which go down and then up to the next floor. Uh, the two bedrooms I just showed you are at the front and the little office. We have another little vestibule back here. What we're gonna do with this vestibule is we're gonna put um, a washer and a dryer here. I've got the piping already kind of ready to go for that. And then maybe some shelves or like something for an ironing board, that kind of thing. Uh, this is a good little view of the, the back garden, unfortunately, but this is a really good space for us to have the washer and dryer. Uh, once again, it's near where all the linen is and you know it's easy to get stuff down from this floor to here. So we're gonna decided to put it in this area. Um, in this hallway, we're gonna just continue to kind of just put maybe a chandelier we're not too sure yet exactly what we're gonna do with this and then just kind of snazz it up a bit. Uh, on this side, we have what will was a bedroom. We're now converting one of our eight bedrooms into a large bathroom. Uh, and on this side is the um, currently, and it will be, our uh, master um, bedroom. First, let's take a look in the bathroom, which is not really a bathroom, but it will be shortly. So this will eventually be a bathroom and that's going to be quite high on our list of priorities because right now we're suffering kind of with an ensuite that's from the 60s or 70s brown and it's pretty ugly so I'll show you that next um, but so far what I've done in this and I've got other videos showing me taking it up I've removed this floor the same Tomet tiles that they have in here but what we're going to replace it with is we're going to do some um, OSB and we're going to do some waterproof kind of membrane and then we're going to retile it with something that's a little more modern but still old looking uh, and then the idea is we're going to have a cupboard uh, not full height but kind of a like a wooden thing I'm going to make up that's going to go to about this distance I don't know just enough for a suitcase width wise to go in kind of thing and then it'll take this whole section here up. Uh, we're going to have a sink coming out kind of around here. We've got a toilet right now by the window over there. We're going to have a shower sort of in the middle of that wall over there. And then we're going to have a tub that is going this way. So you'll be able to sit in the tub, look outside. The shower, we're going to walk in one side and be able to walk out the other. So it's just going to be a thing of glass. Um, we're going to try to keep it all kind of traditional. Not traditional, but it's kind of old school, kind of whatever. Uh, that's what we're going for in here and in general for this house. So yeah, that'll be next on the list after I get the electricity and after I get the plumbing all done and the AC done actually, which is going to be a big job. So, but hopefully beginning of next year, we'll get to get to doing this bathroom, if not before. So this room is the master bedroom. Um, it's the one that had the issue with the floor where it had sunk, I don't know, yay much, like three inches. Uh, it's pretty level right now. It's not level, but it's, you know, at least it's not like you're falling down the stairs. Um, this is where the fireplace was that I have in the other room, one of the other guest rooms that I showed you before. Um, the idea is that once I get the floor all established again, I'll repair that fireplace, put it back, get some resin to glue the, mort or the uh, marble back together, and uh, yeah, make it nice again. We're going to do the same kind of treatment in here. We're going to do big ceiling rows, we're going to do some plaster work. We're not sure what kind of panels we're going to do in here, if any. We're not sure yet. That's We've got two nice windows here. This is the north side, more or less. We have a small-ish walk-in closet. It's not very big, but uh, mostly my wife's stuff in here for when she's here. And uh, there's a water heater in there now, which we're eventually going to move to another floor upstairs. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad size, I guess. There's some built-ins that we're probably going to keep, maybe change the handles on them because they're a bit 60s, but otherwise. My wife, when she's doing her jewelry for fun stuff, uh, works here currently. She will eventually work downstairs in that in her studio room or whatever you want to call it. She has a little makeup table. And then when she's actually working uh, and doing you know stuff on the internet or whatever, uh, emails and things, she has her little desk here for her computer. Uh, this is the ensuite. It's very small. And it's very 60s or 70s, we're not sure, and very brown. It is absolutely, we, we were almost like, well, we really don't want to show people this, but it's probably best to, that everyone sees the reality when you're working on a house that you're living in. Things are not nice, and it's been three years that we've been suffering with this bathroom, which is why that bathroom is a big priority. Because uh, once we get that done, I can rip this all out and do an ensuite, a proper ensuite in here. Uh, the plan will be to put a shower on this side by the window. Uh, a sink 
in the center. And then where the shower currently is, that will be the toilet, just because of the way the plumbing all works in the house. The sewer works well going along that wall. But anyways, and we've also got our only little air conditioner, which vents outside. Uh, it's like a mobile air conditioner and it kind of does this room. Because this room is really quite big, it's five meters by four and a half, five, if you include the, the uh, cupboard and the, the ensuite, it uh, barely keeps up. So we only cool this room in the house uh, currently, just, just for sleeping. So, but eventually we'll have above all the doors, we'll have heating and cooling and a big unit outside to cool the whole house. So now we're done with this floor. That's pretty much, you've seen everything on this floor and the ground floor. We'll now head up the stairs and we'll take a look at the top floor. And we'll talk about what's up there. So on our way up the stairs, we have this chimney thing, which was for the, the pellet stove that's downstairs. We're gonna get rid of this because we're not gonna be doing um, burning of stuff. We're gonna use the electricity from the solar panels. Uh, and luckily we have the little piece of the railing that's missing and all, and we think all of the, uh, I guess they're balustrades that the one that we're missing on the uh, stairs up uh, in this corner here, which would be great to fix. So, you know, eventually when we get a new roof, we get rid of this and uh, we'll feel a little less strange. But yeah, let's head upstairs. We have another um, cupboard in here, which will be used for suitcases or something. Once again, it's quite a good distance and it goes the whole width of the wall. Uh, above me, we have a large, I don't want to call it a skylight. I guess it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, uh, canopy of a roof of a of a of a light that's up there i'll show you in a sec but it's really grim it's got so much dirt uh there's cracks in it it doesn't leak somehow thankfully at this point um but we're going to replace that with something that's in keeping but either a flat piece of glass on an angle that we can find easier to clean or replace it with something the same kind of pattern we're not sure yet it also depends on what we're allowed to do so because it's exterior, we have to get permission from uh, basically the mayor's office of what we can do. I'm also going to be doing a lot of restoration for these balustrades and these handles, uh, railings. I mean, they've got a lot of woodworm damage that we're going to have to work on getting out. And, uh, and we're going to be resurfacing all of these. Um, I think they're limestone steps and floors. So let's head up to the next floor. So this is the top floor. Um, we're good. We have four bedrooms up here. Two of them are quite small. Um, one of them has been converted from a large, we think a large bedroom into a bedroom and a bathroom. The bathroom's a good size. Uh, there's also, they've added a hallway here, um, which kind of leads to a ladder that goes up to the loft, I guess you'd call it. We also have a pigeonary, which um, I have an actual video for, which I'll link at the back to, to show you what it looks like up there but because um, there's a lot of boxes right now. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting what we found up there. Uh, and our plans are to make windows in it and have like a telescope and we look at the night sky and do fun stuff with that. So I'll throw that video at the end for you to look at if you're interested. So this is another bedroom we have up here on this top floor. Sorry for the echo, it's gonna be pretty bad. Um, but yeah, it's a good size. Once again, probably four or five meters by four or five meters. We have a closet in here, which will be good for hanging up tall things. It'll certainly take a king or a super king bed. And uh, we're probably gonna not do as much, uh, what would you call it, kind of glamorizing or making it fancy. We'll probably maybe put a ceiling rose, maybe some coving and kind of leave it at that. We're probably not gonna do a lot of woodwork or paneling up here because probably not gonna be filling a lot of these rooms. Um, it's such a silly big house that, you know, if we have guests over, they won't care that much anyway. So we're just gonna have a few nice rooms to have people stay in. Um, once again, self exposure over here, two good windows. Um, there's actually something that we have to do with a lot of these windows and not necessarily the windows because they're in really good shape, but the shutters. So the shutters, because it's so windy here in the winter and spring and whatnot, um, they tend to blow open. So they rip out of the wall. So we have to repair a lot of them. So there's a whole lot of windows in this house, which is why I've only got that one open and not this one open, is that it, uh, if you try to open the shutters, they fall off, which we don't want, obviously. So that's on the list of things to do that are pretty crucial to get done eventually, you know, more sooner versus later. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of damage on the thing, on the on the shutters and the, the, the pins that hold them in or the, the hinges. So, but... In order to do that, we need scaffolding. So what we're hoping to do is to, when we get the roof replaced, we're gonna pay a little extra and get them to keep scaffolding up on the two sides of the house. 
and then we're gonna I'm gonna repair all those shutters myself, take them down, paint them, restore them, and then put them back up again. But that's probably not till next spring. That's what we're guessing, but we're not sure. So the next bedroom is on the other side of the house at the front, and it's got a little sink in it, and it's got windows that can open as well. Uh, we also don't have any lights in that room, so you're gonna have to kind of bear with me and use your imagination if you can't see something. Let's go take a look. So this is another good size bedroom. Um, it's got, well, we used to call it the Spanish room, I think, or Mexican room. I can't remember what we used to call it because of the wood um, on the ceiling and then over the windows and over the doors. We've got a lot of this wood here. Uh, we're probably not going to keep it brown. We're not a big fan of brown wood um, unless it's furniture. Uh, so it may do kind of like a painted gray or we may just plasterboard over it or drywall over it. Uh, the wood, this wood, there's nothing, there's no big deal about it. It's done in the 60s. We think this whole roof uh, above us was replaced then. There's nothing, there's nothing authentic about it. Um, it's just whether we want to keep it like that or not. We're probably going to do gray, we're thinking, but we're not sure. It just depends on what kind of, how we decide to decorate this room. Uh, there's also a closet in here that goes quite, quite a bit back. I don't know, about to here. Um, and we've got our, as I said, it's a little sink in here, which they used to do a lot in European houses, I guess. Uh, no toilet, no shower, but just a sink. So I guess you'd come to bed and brush your teeth or do your hair or whatever like that. Um, but yeah, so what we're planning to do is we're planning to take this bedroom and bring the wall out possibly to about here. We're not sure exactly where. Make a little wall here and then a door. And we're going to put a little shower, a toilet in the corner here and a shower and a little sink and we'll have another ensuite. It won't be very big, but it'll be good enough. We're not planning on like renting out rooms or anything like that or making it into a, you know, a, a hotel. So yeah, we, we've got the wood here, uh, these walls we don't like, there's some sort of stucco stuff, which is kind of why it feels very uh, Adobe or Mexican or Spanish. So we're probably gonna flatten those all down. So we're, right now we're also currently using this to store all the wardrobes we've bought over the, over the while. Um, we've got them, the stains and stuff is just a spray for bugs that's we did not washed off, but it should be fine. We're going to have to refinish everything anyways, but I think there's like six or eight wardrobes in here for all the rooms. And I've either drilled out the dowels or unscrewed them or something like that, just because it took up so much space. And I've just stacked them in this room. So this is the, either the Mexican room or the wardrobe room. We're not too sure right now. Let's go check the other bedrooms on this floor out. Oh, and as well, Right here is where I do all my editing videos. So this is going to be my little office. My wife's office will be right below me. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing, that's where I put all these videos together and where I do all my work that I need to do. Uh, nothing fancy, but yeah, we're not going to do anything there other than making it kind of just painting it and doing them you know, functional with probably some LED lights in the ceilings and that kind of thing. So towards the back of the house and the gardens there, I can't open that window or I would show you. Um, but basically we're using this to store a lot of the beds that we already have. There's nothing wrong with them. Just we've got nowhere to put them and no bedrooms really that need them because we can't, we're not having guests over. So there's a weird oil thing heater here that we're going to get rid of. Um, and that also leads to the trap door up there that goes to the pigeon area that I was talking about before. Um, yeah. And then the other thing we're going to plan to do back here is going to put a spiral staircase that goes up to the pigeon area eventually. We'll see how that works. And then we're going to make this whole section here uh, bookshelves and possibly with a kind of a hidden automated door or something that comes out or slides that will allow us into this room. So we have a bookshelf in front of it. So it's kind of like a fun little, you know, you pull the book and the door slides or something like that. And I haven't figured out yet. It's kind of far down the road, but I'm going to have fun with doing stuff like that. And this will be the games room slash guest bedroom for kids or something. I'm not sure. Let's go take a look. Yeah, so we're going to have this as kind of the games room. I'm thinking of putting either a TV on this wall, pull-out couch, or some sort of futon-y thing that you can sit on and that we can sit here and play video games with and look out the windows. Once again, I can't open this one because the shutter will fall off. Uh, it's nice that we have a lot of cupboards along back here um, that we're going to put filled with, you know, DVDs or music or whatever we want to do in here uh, to store stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot of water damage in this room. Uh, this room was absolutely crazy. It was a really dark hunter green kind of wallpaper with blue flowers on it. And it was so dark. It also had a blue uh, linoleum kind of floor in here and it smelled really weird. Well, kind of like 
medicine or something. I don't know how to explain it, but medicine is the best description I could give you. And it, they wallpapered all the way up into the ceiling, the same wallpaper everywhere. It was the darkest room in the house. I mean, yeah, I know the the shutters closed, but it's so much brighter here than it was. And they wallpapered all these doors. It was just crazy. So we're going to brighten it up, redo all the plaster, well, not redo it, but you know, fix all the plaster in here, give it a nice paint and uh, not to go too crazy in here. Yeah, maybe put a uh, chandelier or something in there, but nothing too crazy. Just if we find something that's an antique or something, we'll throw it back in. Uh, yeah, we may or may not keep these lights. We're not sure yet. Uh, and yeah, it, basically, because it gives us some of the best views in the whole house out here. And then on the, the small bedroom that's on the other side, which I'll show you next. So yeah, this is a nice little small bedroom we have. Um, it'll probably be the one that people want the most. We're not going to do anything too fancy in here. Uh, one thing we do have to do, though, is fix the floor. Uh, the floor is sloping massively down here, and this is above our master bedroom. Uh, so we'll be removing the tiles, flattening it out. This baseboard or skirting board is actually on a, a slope down like that. So it was till it was sloping down before they even put in this wall. So what we think happened is there's a cupboard here. We think this is the original entrance to this room, this bedroom, and then the uh, bathroom beside. And so they've added the wall for the hallway and the, the wall separating the bathroom from this bedroom. So they kind of just did a, making a wall and sat it on this without reinforcing with anything. We're not going to adjust the wall. We're going to leave the wall as it is. We'll remove the baseboards. We're probably going to change them anyways. Remove these tiles in here in the hallway and in the bathroom, which I'll show you next. And then we're just going to basically level the floor and put them back down on top. So this is going to be a great bedroom for someone because it probably has the best view. Uh, we've got a view out here of the Black Mountains and you can see kind of vineyards going towards the mountains. They're just little mountains. They're not quite as big as the Pyrenees. They're definitely not as big as the Pyrenees, but it's kind of nice. Um, you can see when it's raining over there versus not here, the clouds going over them. It's a nice view and you can also see the garden, which I spent a lot of time working on. So, but I'll show you that after I show you this floor. So yeah, basically we've just got a little kind of a closet here. As you can see, the door doesn't open because the floor is all buckled. Um, but we're going to replace all these tiles, as I said. And there's a little ladder here that allows you to go to a trap door that you can get into above the rafters and then into the attic above us. And we're going to probably remove some shelves here. We're going to remove, put a water heater in there and, you know, do an electrical panel, that sort of thing. We have to have multiple ones here. So we're going to be putting one of them probably in here. Uh, and anyways, let's go on to the bathroom. I'll show you what we've got to work with. So this would have been the main bathroom in the house. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely 60s. It's pretty cool. So my wife actually wants to keep the sink and we're going to move it down into her workshop or uh, craft room or whatever you want to call it where she does a jewelry and other kind of things so she just likes it i think it's a pretty cool sink uh, we don't want to throw it out and uh yeah why not use it in there uh, for the rest of this bathroom our plan is is to remove this remove the tub remove the bidet remove the toilet remove the shower and completely reorganize everything however we're thinking of keeping these alcoves so what we might do is just reorganize things. So what we're thinking of doing is towards the front where the shower is, this, the walk-in shower, we're gonna put the toilet. We're gonna to put the sink, like a double sink, right here where the bathtub is. And then we're gonna have a huge, well, big walk-in shower here. Uh, I may actually insert a window, a round porthole window, which we have in this house quite a bit. We have one in our ensuite, and we have one in the kitchen where the marble sink is. Uh, so I may add one in here if we get permission, we have to ask for it, but we probably could. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have, once again, we, my wife loves the, Samantha loves the tub in front of the window thing. So we're going to put a uh, kind of a standing clawfoot tub here on the edge of this wall. And you'll be able to look out and see birds and clouds and stuff. But anyways, yeah, a lot to do in here. Once again, I got to remove the floor, straighten it all out. And uh, otherwise, we're not going to go crazy. We're not going to have too many uh, embellishments with plaster. We may put a ceiling rose in here. We'll probably have a chandelier in here hanging over the tub, or at least in the center of this room. And then we're also going to have like LED lights for over the sink and in the shower and stuff like that. So that's the plan for this room. We also have a kind of built-in closets that we're probably going to keep. They don't look so bad. It's a good medicine chest or whatever. 
So uh, anyways, yeah, that's our plan. Now let's head down and uh, take a look out the back of the garden. So going out to the back of the house, we have a set of double doors that lead us into a, I guess, a vestibule. Uh, and the vestibule has got a really cool little sink on the side that's made out of marble. And it's got a little shelf over here. And uh, another set of uh, double doors that go out into the garden. Let's take a look. So this is the back garden. Um, this is one of the main reasons why we bought this property. It wasn't necessarily to get eight bedrooms or anything stupid like that. It was just that in France, when you're in a village, it's very difficult to get exterior property, like a, as in a garden. Uh, if you're in the countryside or something like that, and you're kind of out of walking distance from the down, from the, the village or the town, you can get more property. But when you're in an actual village like us, we're on a pretty main road, probably the main road. Um, yeah, getting this, getting that back garden is was a big deal. So what I've done is I've poured over the last three years. Uh, well, actually, last, last summer, basically, the end of last summer, I poured about 46 tons of concrete on my, by myself. Um, it was a big job. Um, I've also leveled uh, the garden. Uh, the whole garden tends to drain back towards the house. So I've added in um, French drains along there to kind of catch it. The patio slopes this way. I've also got a kind of a little motor with the Kalkani Vos here that we're going to fill in. Um, that collects all the rainwater and then that rainwater gets pumped into the garage which then gets used on the sprinkler system to water the plants and water the grass so it's a really good little system I've made over the last three years designing it and building it and it's just starting now to pay off finally now that I can grow grass and we've got rid of the dirt and all the and all the bad stuff uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to put uh, travertine tiles down on top of all the, the concrete so it won't just be concrete uh, it's just well we're, if we're going to get the roof done we're afraid that they're going to drop tiles or damage it so there's really no point there's no rush uh, we can still grow all the plants we can grow the perennials and the, and the rose bushes and the vines and everything else you want to grow here and get things going and get the grass going so that we can uh, have a nice garden in a couple more years when we get the roof done so yeah basically this is the kitchen on this side obviously the hallway over here um, is going to be, this is the sunroom area, which I was talking about. And this is the extension, I don't know if you can see it, but this whole section was added on, you think, in the 60s. So what we're going to do is replace the windows, be something more in keeping with what those are, kind of that French style. And then we're not sure if we're going to do the whole length of this or just this section and replace it with doors. And then as you can see, it's gonna go out on the pool, which will be quite nice. Um, we've also had to build, because one of our cats is very sick, it has leukemia, some kind of feline leukemia. I don't really understand it. Uh, it wasn't supposed to survive. We bought some really kind of dodgy drugs and paid too much money and we saved this cat. Uh, but it can't never get exposed from another cat that has it. Otherwise it will get it again and we'll have to pay for it to be go to the hospital and get these injections and stuff like that. So we've had to build a catio. So all of our four cats go to the catio. They love it. They're not there right now, but normally they love it. They love to sit in the sun. They're out. Uh, we also take them for walks around the garden on a leash, which they kind of like. Um, and uh, we also have the whole rain of the house them to run up and down. So they love running up and down the stairs. So it's not they don't get an exercise. It's just they're now kind of inside, semi-outside cats. Yeah, I did the catio. We've got some shelves there. I got to take care of some of the weeds and stuff, but uh, I've been doing a lot of work uh, on the outside of this garden. Uh, some of the other things I've done is I've repaired uh, this arbor. Uh, the arbor basically runs the depth of the uh, garden. Uh, I put lights on it, um, repainted it, straightened it all out. Uh, it, towards the back of the garden, a branch from a big tree this big tree here fell onto it and it bent and, and broke off a lot of the the metal so I've repaired and replaced and welded the metal and got everything straight mostly straight you know it's once again it's old we don't care too much but I've done all that uh, I've also repaired we have a little uh, gazebo kind of thing that I'm trying to grow uh, vines up on this side over here um, repaired all that the last big thing to do is I got to repair the greenhouse towards the back. The greenhouse is going to be a whole summer. Um, there was a whole nother tree beside where this large tree is now uh, that they were basically jammed together and those roots ran under the greenhouse, destroyed the floor like it was up like 
this much and lifted all the, 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 the walls that hold up the metal. So over the last three years, I've been kind of just, I removed all the roots, dug under it, and just letting it settle down and kind of naturally kind of fall back into place, I think. So maybe next summer, maybe the summer after, that'll be the big challenge. And I'm going to re remove all the glass from it, label it, and then basically straighten all the metal out, paint it, rust proof it, uh, and then put all the glass back in, fixing, including fixing all the, the glass that's broken in it. And then hopefully we'll have a nice place in the winter to sit and have a coffee or whatever and sit and enjoy the weather. If it gets a little cool at night, you sit in there. Uh, we can grow lots of plants in there. We're going to put a heat pump in there so we can get it cooled in the summer and heated in the winter. So we can run the greenhouse all year round. Um, but yeah, that's part of the plan and that's what we've done back here. I've still got to do the lamppost. Uh, I've repaired the fountain which was didn't hold water. Uh, it recycles. Uh, and then I have a bunch of uh, storage tanks in the garage, which I'm going to add to this winter, that basically allows me to collect all the water because there's so many water bands here where I'm able to use water. So I'll try to get another video out showing you the whole process and why it took me three years and how much was done getting this pool in, removing the tree, uh, what else? All the other work I've had to do to get this garden to be kind of taken care of itself, including all the automation and the sprinklers and stuff like that. So anyways, let's go and check out, check out the garage. So this is the garage. It's a good size. I think it probably holds, I don't know, six, seven cars if you wanted to. Um, probably doesn't look very big on camera, but it goes back quite a good ways. Uh, there's also a ladder that goes up to kind of a storage hay loft. It's not hay, but I think it's probably hay originally, kind of a triangle shape. So it's not very usable, but it's great for storing boxes or anything you ever want to, that you're going to use rarely kind of thing. Uh, we've also got a door over here that leads to a street behind us. Um, which is really good for getting to the pub or for going into the little village, which is just here. Uh, the whole thing slides over so you can get a cars in here like that. Eventually I'll be automating it. Um, there's also a little door over there that you can get through locked and whatnot. Um, but yeah, basically it's a really good garage for a workshop, which is fantastic. Um, I'm also going to be taking um, these IBCs, they're called, and basically this is where I'm storing all the water at this point. So there's 3,000 liters. Each one of these is 1,000 liters. Uh, I don't know how many gallons that is, but it's a lot. And uh, basically I can fill one of these in about a day. Actually, all three of them will fill up in about a day's of rain, a day worth of rain here um, with that collection system, which is just amazing. We Because uh, I use quite a lot of water when I'm, when I'm watering uh, the garden and the grass. Uh, once it's established, which is not established yet, uh, I won't need to water as much. But right now I'm fertilizing it really heavy and I'm really pushing it to grow and spread. So I have to water it probably twice a week to make it go, 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 because our temperatures are really high and it's really dry. Um, but anyways, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here, like there's concrete uh, sacks over here that I didn't finish that I've still got to use up, hopefully in, won't be too old by the time I go to use it. And I've got a lot of gravel and sand and stuff like that for mixing concrete. And yeah, basically there's a good little office over here or, or workshop area that I can use. I've got lots of space to store stuff, a lot of junk that we're gonna eventually get rid of, but you know, or at least put up there. Uh, one of the other plans I wanna do is as a project is I wanna make a bit of a lift or an elevator here, not like a real elevator, but just something with a winch so that I can load boxes or load like wheelbarrows things that we're never going to use except for once in a while, put them on this and then have it lift up through a hole in the ceiling and just leave it up there. That's kind of a goal uh, because I'm learning how to weld and getting better at that. Hopefully that's something that's in my kind of uh, abilities now. But yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, I'm also going to be taking those IBCs and moving them. We're going to move them down to the far end over here where there's a lot of stuff, which is why I haven't done it yet because it's going to be a winter job probably. And we're going to buy another five. So we have a total of eight, which is 8,000 liters. So when there's a big rainstorm, which we tend to have a big rainstorm all at once versus or, or like, like a day or two solid and then it doesn't rain for weeks. So capturing that and capturing 8,000 liters isn't a problem. It's more along the lines of, you know, how many of these things can I get? Because what I'm finding is this isn't really a good spot for it. I got tools over here. If we're going to take a car and park it, it would be good to put there and not back there. So it was just like, you know, hindsight's great, but we're going to move back there eventually and then reroute all the piping so that it goes to that side. Well, I think that's going to be the end of this, this video. Um, it was nice showing off the house. A little bit embarrassing because, you know, we're living out of boxes. Everything is disaster. Pipes everywhere, dust everywhere, ruined walls, you know, water damage. 
but it gives you an idea that if you ever will think of doing something like this yourself, just how much work's involved. I'm three years in, we're still in boxes. We still don't have a proper bathroom. We still don't have a kitchen. Um, yes, we could be spending a lot more money hiring people to do stuff, but that wasn't the original plan. That wasn't in our budget. So I'm doing it all myself. I'm enjoying it. It's just a lot slower than you think. I thought eh, by this point, we'd at least have the basics done. But you know, it's gonna be another probably seven years of this. So if you're interested in following me and supporting me and cheering me on for the next, I don't know how many years, uh, give me a follow. And I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. It makes me feel like this is uh, something that's worth doing. Let me know if you have any thoughts on what to do um, other than hiring people. And uh, what would you do with this place would be a, a good question. Yeah. Would you tackle it? You think I'm crazy? Um, We've done a lot in the garden and that's it in three years really so next up i'm going to be doing inside the house i've got a rewire with about 250 300 plug sockets working with an electrician but i'm doing all the kind of manual work so i'll be running all the wires to the fuse board um, and you know cutting all the grooves in the walls because you know there's six inch or more uh, stone walls that I have to cut into, putting all the plug sockets in, running the wires, that kind of thing. And then the electrician's going to do the final hookup and make sure it's safe and everything. So that's the plan. The next plan is to work on that. Uh, I may do a video in the next few weeks about how I did all this garden. I'm just kind of waiting for it to be a little better looking because it's still filling in the grass. Uh, but yeah, for a year of grass, it's not looking too bad. And uh, hopefully in the next few years, it'll look a lot better. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it here, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.